Today is travel day. We are moving from Cambodia to Bali. You'll probably notice I'm wearing my mate Fred's top. It's a nice travel top, nice and lightweight. I think it's going to take us about 10 hours to get there or so. Very early in the morning, as you can probably tell by my face, I've literally just got out of bed. And we say goodbye to our lovely golden temple today and move on to Kuta in Bali for two months of travel, well, two months of relaxation really. And we'll explore Bali a little bit, one of our favorite places that we've been to. We'll take you on the journey. So we finally made it to Kuta in Bali, 10 long hours of traveling. We flew to Kuala Lumpur first, had a three hour stop over there and then continued our journey to Bali. It's one of our favorite places. We've been here a couple of times before. Love the people, love the weather, love how cheap it is. It allows us to keep traveling for much longer, hopefully. Tomorrow we are off to watch the Conor McGregor versus Khabib fight. I can't pronounce his surname, so I'm not gonna try. No. No. Oh my god. Oh. Other than that, we don't really have any solid plans. I've got a couple of friends here, but they're actually in Manila at the moment playing poker and they play tennis as well. One of them's a tennis coach, so hopefully when they make it back, I can finally get some more exercise as I'm not doing much exercise whilst traveling, so I need to sort that out a little bit. We are here in Bali for two months before we travel back to England for Christmas to catch up with friends and family as we will have been away for around about a year at that point, just under a year. And we'll stay in England for five weeks and then we will fly back out to Asia or to the Bahamas, depending on whether I win the Vlogger in Paradise competition. Without any further ado, Let's get into it. The second winner for the Platinum Pass from the Vlogger in Paradise Challenge is none other than Mr. Oliver Biles. Oh my God. Oh my Congratulations, God. Oliver. You did it, man. You were Okay, now to the part of the vlog that you probably tuned in for, the poker hands. I played on a feature TV table in London for the Cash Game Festival. It was held at the Aspas Casino. And the Cash Game Festival, they run sort of cash game festivals all around Europe and this stop was in London so I decided to apply to be on the feature table and thankfully I got on and it was a 1-2 game the min sit down was 200 and the max I think was uncapped the table itself was pretty nitty there were a couple of spots on the table which we'll get into as the hands go through but yeah let's get straight into the first hand okay in this first hand the under the gun player raises to six it gets three callers and I'm in the big blind with four deuce off. I think it's a pretty standard defend when it's this multi-way. Flop comes four deuce six with two clubs. I decide to check and Moz, the guy with six three suited, he decides to bet 20 into 30. Now, I think if I was in position here, I would probably raise slightly smaller. It's a pretty wet flop. I don't really want too many people coming along as well. 
but because I'm in the big blind and I've got a person to act behind me, I decide to raise it up slightly bigger. I still think maybe I raised it a little bit too big here. I'd be interested to see what you guys think in the sizes in a lot of these hands actually. This one in particular with my flop size raise. So I make it 66 to go and the guy with the second nut flush draw, he decides to just snap fold and it gets back on Moz who tanks for quite a while. And I think like actually this guy, having played a few hands with him, I think at this point may just call it off here. If he does decide to call, it's probably gonna, he's probably gonna have about a pot size bet on the turn. So any safe cards on the turn, I'm pretty much just getting it in and hoping not to see a club or three or five, but he does eventually decide to fold. So maybe I made it a little bit too big. I think I could probably go 55 here would be okay. The second hand is against a guy called Carlos, who I have an interesting hand with later on. He min raises under the gun to four and I decide to three bet to 14 with King 10 of clubs. I think generally I'm not three betting this hand very often, but against this particular player, I decided to three bet because I wanted to try and isolate him. The big blind aim calls with pocket fives and this is where he gives away quite a big tell. He puts in one chip, but actually you can see he's talking to the dealer and he asks, or he says that he wants to raise, but because it's one chip, he has to just call. So at this point, I'm thinking he's pretty strong and I don't want to get too out of line against him on most flops. The flop comes down 3-3-9 three, three, with two spades. I've got a backdoor flush draw and backdoor straights. He bets like 12 into 43, which is under a third pot. I think it's fine to just float here. I don't really want to be raising, like I said earlier. I think he was pretty strong, so I don't know if he's going anywhere. So I decided to just call and aim in the big line calls as well. So we take it to a turn. The turn is the queen of spades. So if that was the club, that'd be lovely. But because it's a spade, I'm pretty much just giving up in this hand now. The pot's 79, he bets 24, I think. Yeah, he bets 24. I decide to snap fold and aim snap fold as well. And Carlos has pocket kings. So I'm glad I folded that hand and didn't try to get too out of line. Okay, the next hand's an interesting one. I'm in a small blind with eight deuce off and it had three limpers. I don't normally want to complete here, but I'm on a TV table, I want some TV time. So I decide to call. The flop comes 889 with two clubs. And I think in this spot, this is where I think I made a mistake. I actually decided to lead for $4. I think probably check raising is slightly better. I might be more inclined to, to lead if there was less people. And aim decides to call the four and everyone else gets out of the way. The turn brings another nine. So at this point, I'm probably just going into check call mode. So I decide to check. Let Aim take the lead in the betting if he decides to. Give him the nice stare down there. See what he wants to do. And he does decide to bet. He bets seven, I think. Yeah, he bets seven into 16. It's a standard call here. I'm not gonna do anything else. If he's got clubs, I'm just gonna keep letting him bet. So I decide to call. Pot's now 30, the river comes the five of clubs. So I now lose to six, seven of clubs, but obviously that's pretty unlikely. I decide to check again and let him try and bluff if he's got his bluffing hands. I don't think I'm getting much value if I do bet. I don't think he calls it worse. So I check and after he thinks about it for a little bit, he decides to bet 20. And this is where I'm really, really not sure what to do. I don't think I can fold. It was a hand very early on on the table. I didn't have many reads against him particularly. And obviously I'm not raising, so I think about it for a little bit. I think I could be chopping with an eight. He could be bluffing with clubs. So I do decide to call and I get shown the ace nine. So I lose that hand. This next hand I'm pretty sure it's a standard hand apart from probably my sizing. I think I make it a little bit too big, so I'll be interested to see what other people think about a decent sizing for this particular spot. Under the gun player seemed to be a recreational. He decides to just limp with king six suited. Nuno, the guy next to him, seemed to be a pretty solid player, makes it 10 with queen jack suited. Stefan, interestingly, I mean, I'm definitely raising here, but he decides to flat with ace queen suited 
and I think one other guy calls and he comes on to me. I'm gonna let myself take over in the commentary booth actually. I talk about why I make it the sizing that I do. Things don't play well in a multi-way pot, so you want to eliminate yeah. a, few, a few of the players, yeah. I was also, but I was in the big line, that's what we're talking about, the hand kings, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, and you had raised it up to so, 59, there was, I think, 35 in yeah. the pot already. So, undergun called for two, uh, yep. undergun plus two, raised to 10. Then there were two calls. Two calls, yep. So, there's about 35 in the pot. There was, exactly, yeah. So, I'm out of position here in the big line. I don't really want the other three calling. So, I don't mind one calling. There's one fish in the in the pot. Yep. It was uh, the guy opposite me in the hat, so I didn't mind him coming along. But if I make it something like 35, 40 there, the guy who makes it 10 will call, yeah. and then everyone else You calls. did get, yeah, like the ace, right? yeah, exactly, because now mm. everyone has the pot odds for yeah. it, right? And then there's what, like 160 in the pot, and I have kings against three other opponents out of position. Yeah. It's not a position I really want to be in there. Mm. Fair um, point. So I'm, I'm raising it a little bit bigger there to try and thin the field, maybe get one, possibly two callers, okay. but I don't want all of them. Uh, awesome. So that was, that, that was why I thought hey, about it. That's perfect. My thinking behind it's, it. It's, it's, it's actually really cool to kind of get the... The, the afterthoughts of like kind of plays like that, which really yeah. stand out to us, like where uh, it's it's for me like I th when you when you were tanking about the decision of the the bet sizing, I was like oh here I would raise probably like 35 here, and then you're like 59. I'm like see this I'd be interested to see what other people think the sizing should have been. I think looking back at the hand. I'm right in thinking that I should size it up slightly because I'm out of position against three callers and a limper, but I think 59 is too big. I think. Somewhere between 48 and 53 for me would be a good size, actually. I didn't want everyone else to call. I wanted to get Carlos heads up, to be honest. And you'll see why I wanted him heads up a little bit later on. The next hand I raise up Ace-Jack offsuit under the gun. I get a call by Moz, who seemed to be a recreational player, on the button and everyone else folds. So we take a heads up. I've decided to keep the whole cards closed so you could try and guess what he might have. It's not the most interesting hand, but I think I play it fine. The flop comes four, five, queen with two clubs, and I have no club. A lot of the time I'm checking out position here, so I do decide to just check. I don't think there's any point in betting. I might bet if I have a club in my hand, because I have some backdoor outs with a club, but I decide to check, and he quickly checks back. The turn is the seven of hearts. And again, I'm pretty much just done with this hand, to be honest. I think this hits his range a lot harder than it hits my range. So I decide to check and he quickly bets out 15, which is pot. And I decide to fold and he has pocket fives. So it's a pretty good fold and he seemed pretty frustrated that he didn't get any more money out of me. So the nittiness in me lives on and saves me some money. The last hand for you is an interesting one. I'm gonna let the commentator take over for most of it, but there's a limper from Moz. He has 10-9 suited. Carlos has 8-6 off, he calls. I decide to make it 13 from the button. Really happy to obviously raise this hand, inflate the pot slightly against these two recreational players. They do decide to both call, which is good news for me. The flop comes king, nine, deuce with two clubs and I'll let the lovely commentator from the Cash Game Festival take over from here. So top pair, top kicker here now for uh, Oliver. And wow, interesting shove here from Carlos. So it went, what the hell happened here? Check, was it check, check, raise? And a, what the fuck is happening? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. How did 8-6 just shove? And we is he gonna get there? Feels bad, man. Eight six shove. Poker is dead. I, I'm just. I quit, guys. I'm done. Can't do this. Done. I can't even talk anymore. I can't even talk anymore. Unbelievable. We are going to watch the Conor McGregor versus Khabib Namalegelelidov. 
not really sure how to pronounce his surname, 